Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. And today we're gonna to be looking at a Patreon's question. And what they're trying to do is create this speaker grill here. So as you can see, I've created these hexagons across here and created this mesh. And the workflow the Patreon tried to use was the sketch on surface workflow. But it wasn't really working out because of the actual sketch itself was created as a mesh of hexagons. Now, if anybody's tried to do this before, it obviously slows right down. And you can see that if I double click on the actual sketch itself, now I'm running on quite an old machine here. And you can see, well, this is really churning away here. And it takes out a lot of time. You can see the amount of degrees of freedom as well. So it's not a viable use of the sketch on surface. If we try to add that to the sketch on surface, things will run very, very slowly. So what do we do? Well, I'm going to show you a way of using the Lattice 2 workbench and just creating one single hexagon to create this hexagon mesh. You also see that we didn't need the sketch on the surface. So you can see how the hexagons have been placed here into this piece. And you'll notice that all the hexagons run with their normal in the direction of the curvature of this model. So let's venture into the ways we would do this with the Lattice 2 workbench. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header, on the about page, or in the descriptions of these videos. So before we start, let's have a look at the model that we want to create this hexagon mesh against. And I'm gonna hide the cuts I've got in here and bring back the original sketch. So as you can see, this is a sketch and it's mirrored across this way. So this is just a speaker grill. And what's happened with this is that sketch has been taken in something like the part or even the part design. Let's come over to where it is in here, which is in the part, and it's been extruded and mirrored across. Let's just hide one of these Come into here. You can see you've got the extrude and the mirrored extrude here as well. Let's hide that one and the mirror extrude on this side. And it's created this solid here. And we've taken a grid of hexagons and cut those into this solid using one single sketch. So what I'm going to do is take the original sketch, edit, copy, and we don't need the first sketch. So let's go all the way out to there, sketch 005, okay that. And I'm gonna create a new document and I'll probably take these and close these. Let's go file close. And I've got the sketch in memory. All I need to do is select the document and control V or edit paste. So what I've done is paste the sketch upon there. Now this is quite a simple sketch. So it's telling me I've got invalid sketch. Let's open the sketch validations tool and run these checks. So this is probably to do with the coincident constraints. Uh, fix those. And find reverse geometry, we're all looking good. And let's close that. And now we should come into the sketch. And there we go. So what was happening, because we was referencing another sketch in there, when I copied the sketch, you saw that it had a dependency on the sketch below. Then there was some reference geometry in here where we referenced an edge using the create external geometry, that link tool there. So that was problematic. And we've basically just fixed that. And we've got our sketch here. So we can see it's a pretty simple sketch. And this here is an arc. And this is important. This is what we can use quite easily with a Lattice 2 workbench. We can use B splines as well, but this arc will be used in a polar array. So to prove it's an arc, let's add some radius on that. 
there we go there's the radius and can see that arc runs that way i'm not going to fully constrain this we're just going to go through this quickly to show you the technique that we would use so we have our sketch this sketch is the profile it can be extruded to make that panel matter of fact that's extruded in the part workbench and we'll extrude that and we'll set this to something like 500 mil so extruding that up there as you can see because it's an arc we have this curvature here i'm going to hide that extrude come back into the extrude and press the spacebar on the sketch to show that sketch so we're going to work on this now now we need some hexagons and if we remember the extrude is going this way if we bring this around this way so along the z-axis then we need hexagons that are going to be following this surface so let's bring back that sketch which is here let's press space on that and you can see that sketch there so i'm going to create a sketch and let's go around this way from the front so the front here so let's come over to the sketcher new sketch looking at the front that we've got we'll look at the x z plane x z and it's on the reverse of this so i'm just going to reverse the direction just to make it easier this should flip this around and we've got it here i am not bothered where this is placed this is placed on the normal base planes and this is fine for me so i'm going to place a hexagon in here and we're going to bring the hexagon out so you can see how that hexagon sits click on rear like so let's use the sketch and view section to section view through there i'm going to make sure that this point is on this line with a point on object constraint and we'll set the radius actually let's set the diameter and we'll set this to five millimeters so this is how small these hexagons are going to be now that looks pretty small let's come back in set that a bit bigger let's go to 10 mil and close that so we've got this hexagon in here this is what we're going to use i'm going to take that hexagon and extrude it come over to the part web edge and we're going to extrude I'm going to set it to some distance, so I'm going to go 50 mil. So we can see that extrude is in there. I'm also going to set that extrude to symmetrical, so true. So that's symmetrical now. That means if I double click on that sketch in that hexagon, this one here, you see where that sits. It sits along this plane here. If I go to model, Click on the extrude and press the space bar. You can see we've extruded out this way. Spectacle is true. Let's set this to false. And you can see, well, it's disappeared because on the sketch, the view section is off. There we go. So that makes life a lot clearer. So you can see it's extruded from this plane. And if I set that extrude, and we're coming back down to symmetrical set this to true and click off this is what we want because when this is moved in line with this arc then it's going to extrude out the bottom and top which makes our life with cutting a lot easier and if we think about it we can actually reduce down that extrude as well so let's come into class hit close because we've got that extrude going out either side of the plane toggle axis cross then we know that we can bring this down a bit so let's go for 10 mil as long as this is wider than this so now we've got the hexagon i'm going to use the lattice 2 workbench now if you haven't got it installed tools add on manager and you find it in here just type in lattice 2 and you'll find it there it is there so the lattice 2 deals with arrays and placements so 
I'm going to create an array of this going this way and also going downwards and place it along this edge ready for cutting. Let's come over to the Lattice 2 workbench. Use the drop down and select Lattice 2. Once in Lattice 2, you'll see an array of tools at the top. The first tool we want is a polar array. So this is an arc, this edge here. If I hide the extrude, we're just going to be dealing with this sketch. So I'm going to take this edge and use this as the polar array. Lattice 2, come down to polar array. And we'll just select the top in the list because we're going to change this in a moment. So you can see the polar array that's been added and these kites or planes, we call them kites, otherwise we're going to get mixed up in planes as in planes and base planes, etc. So the kites have been added. These are placement kites. So I need to add a placement kite to this one as well. So we match kite for kite. So if I wanted it pointing this way, then these kites are in the right direction. But if they weren't, then I would add a placement kite to this one. And that's what I'm going to do anyway, just to have the tutorial as complete as possible. So we've got a kite in here. Let's add a placement. So I'm going to use a placement on this face, the top face of that hexagon. Our aim is to duplicate this across these placements. So we've selected our face. We can click the face or click an edge if we wanted to. And in this case, an edge might be more sufficient, but we'll go for the face anyway. So let's click on that face. And what we need to do is come up to Lattice 2 and come down to Attached Placement and Attached Placement. So that's attached a placement to this object and we should see it somewhere. If I look on the model, we can see the placement. If I hover over that, you can see it sitting there. So at the moment it's deactivated. This is the reason why we can't see it. Let's click on XY plane and see it there. Initial CS and you can see how this changes. Now, if I attach this placement plane, then when we move this using the lattice to move children, it's going to create copies of this linked together along this way, and it's going to place it in the alignment of these kites. So this kite will match this kite. So if you think about how this is placed on here, this hexagon, this is strewed of a hexagon, will actually rotate downwards and point down this way. So the kite will match this kite, will overlay this kite, which is not what we want. We want to keep it in this general direction here. So if we look to the left, we've got the attachment offsets. And we can change these. Now, I advise you not to take away the degree symbol here, because when we change this, let's change this to 90. You can see how that's flipped over. If I took away this degree symbol, and what I'm just going to do is highlight and cut it, control X, and we'll set this to 20. You can see, well, it's not taken. So the minute we've got the degree symbol in there, control V, that is there. So let's set this one to 90. And I'm looking to see how this matches. Go around the Y, 90. And well, we need the X minus 90. Now this is all to do with the X, Y on plane, how this is aligned on here, whether you go X, Y, and Z. Personally, sometimes I can find this quite confusing because the X, Y is on the plane, so the Z will be down this way instead of going this way. So you get this bit of confusion around how this is orientated with the local coordinate system compared to the global coordinate system. If in doubt, just tweak these values a bit until we understand what way we need to rotate this and then we can punch in these values. I've got this rotated around the right way. I think that I need it in the middle because at the moment this will sit protruding this way. So let's come in and look at this. So we want to move this along the Z 
and we can move this into the middle. I'm going to go minus five because this is a 10 millimeter extrude. It goes this way. So that whole thing about using symmetry across here, when we add the kite placement, then that's not needed really. It's only when we don't add the placement and then use the operation against those that that is relevant. So we've added that in there. That's okay that. I'm now going to force copies of these along these kites, which are attached to this edge. To do that, we use the tree view. It's a lot easier. We select the item that we want to move, the extrude. We select its placement, which was the placement. You can see that hovering over there. Control select that. So the extrude, its placement by that kite, and then we select where it's going to be placed, the polar ray. So we've got those three there. Come up to lattice two, come down to the populate with copies and come over to the moved object. So this moves one object from one placement to another. So click on that and you can see it's created link copies across all of those array kites of the polar array. And if we have a look at how that's been placed, let's click on the move extrude come in there, you'll see the polar array within. So what I'm going to do is hide this extrude by clicking on and press the spacebar. I'm going to hide the placement because I don't need that. Press the spacebar on that. And I'm going to deal with the polar array now. And this will affect the number of copies, the placement, etc. As you can see, we've got a count going across there. So we need to figure out the count of how many we're going to go across. And we come down, we've got the polar array, we've got the rotation mode, etc, etc in here. So let's increase the count to about 15. So those are going across like that. And we need to keep this away from the edge. So if you think about it, if we look back at our original extrude of where this is going, and I might keep this on here for reference, you can see this is encroaching on this edge here, which we don't want it. And also this edge here. The polar array, I click on the polar array, press the space bar. We can see where it's going. So let's come into the polar array and look at the offset. Come down and you'll see an offset here. So this offset here, so this is an extra offset for the series. And we can set this to one. If I click off, you'll see what happens. Is take one of these or one placement of these and shifted it forward and you can see it falls out at the end. So I know we shifted forward, we've got to deal with the end now. This is to do with the span end. So you can see the span end here, end of value for the value series generator. And also we've got the step here. These are read only. So you can see I can't actually change these as they're read only at the moment. Our generation mode is span end. And if we look down, we're using the arc range as the span. So that's all locked down. Let's change this to step n. So that's come up to the generator and change this to step n. So now what we've got is that we can edit the steps. Now if I click off, nothing's changed, which is fine. Click back on the polar array. And if we reduce the amount of steps, we're increasing 1.79. Refresh, you can see what's happening here. And we can set whereabouts these are going to be. So I've got a minus value in here and it sends it backwards. And if I set this to 0 0.1, you can see what's happening. So we can back this off from this point. 1.5, click off. And we may have to reduce the count. So let's reduce the count to 13. 0 0.6, 1.8. And that looks about right. So we can see this is backed off from here. And let's come back to something like 0 0.78. I'm happy with that. So I've got my initial array of hexagons. 
and you can see how they're aligned as well. So you can see the normal actually follows the curvature of this. So we're going to get nicely placed hexagons that are cut into this object at the right angle rather than having just straight hexagons down, which looks quite unsightly. Now we've got those, we need to do the same with another batch of hexagons. There are a number of ways of doing this rather than the polar array, we could have used a, if we come in, we've got this coming down array from shape. So we could have used that. So we could create two arcs and created an array of shape from there. But what I'm going to do is just take that moved array that moved to strewed, edit and duplicate selection. And I'm going to uncheck the placement, the sketch, the extrude, and the other sketch, and just leave the polar array. And obviously this moved extrude will be selected as well. And that's okay that. So what's happened is that these, you can see extrude 001 is actually in here, but it's not a copy. It's an actual link back to this one. So I've only taken the one that I want to modify. If I modify this, it's going to have an effect on this one because they're both the same object, the same as this placement. If I press the space bar on here, you can see it jumps to the top and it shows and hides that placement because there's that the same placement. It's a link in. The one that's different is the polar array. Let's hide this polar array. You can see this one is still visible and I want to transform this forwards. Now I don't want to transform it forwards and to the right or left because the curvature will change for this. So I'm just going to select that polar array and right click transform. And we get the transformation options over here or instead come into that polar array and look at the placement. Well, it's actually gonna be an attachment offset because we attached it to that sketch in there. Let's come in, come down to the position and come down to one of these. So. If I click on the X, you can see it's moving left and right. The Z will move it in the right direction. So you can see it's moving in this direction here. So we need to figure out how far we want to move this. And you can see we get a copy of those. So I can move and use the refresh shortcut key, whether it is here, edit, refresh, minus control R, because I'm on Ubuntu. And I can get this place where I want it to be. That's come into the polar array and come down and look at the offset. So remember this is a copy of that polar array. And if we look at the offset, it's one. Let's push it one forward to make the space. Let's set this to two. So let's push that two forward now so you can see it there. So we need 1.5 to stagger it. So that's now staggered. And I can look at the placement again. So let's come up with the attachment, not the placement. And we're going to use the Z and the refresh key to get this into position. So before I go any further, I'm going to save it. I'll save as. And we'll call it speaker. Speaker test and save that. And save that off. Now this is all saved, I'm going to start changing the step N and also the offset to position these in the correct place. At the moment, they're not positioned correctly. I'm going to try and butt these into here, first of all, to figure out the alignment. So let's come into the polar array and come back to the alignment, the attachment offset. And we're looking at the Z. So I'm going to bring this in and use my refresh to get it round about in the middle. Now this is going to be a combination of changing the step and reducing the count. So if we come down to the step of this, we have a step of 0 0.78. So let's increase this to 0 0.8 and hit enter. You can see how that's moved away there. And we're going to do the same on the other one. So I'm actually going to link these up so let's come into the polar array and look at the step in here and use the formula in here. So let's click on that formula icon and we should be able to go to the polar array 001. 
So polar array 001 and link this to the step in here, 0.8 and hit OK. And click off and you can see how that's moved. That means if I move this one, this polar array here. So if we change anything in here and along the step, 0.82, you can see they both changed. So I'm going to bring this out to say 0.9 and have a look at that. This is almost on top of each other now, which is good. You can see there's a little bit of gapping in there. And I'm going to come into this polar array and come up and look at the attachment, position, the Z. And we'll change that and we'll bring it this way to the left. And let's go for a placement of this. We can tweak this later. So I look at the rear, you can see that you can see the size of these. This is because of the curvature. We're trying to make this honeycomb pattern. So now we've got our steps correct. We need to correct our count. So the polar array here, let's drop the count. Not the number of elements, it's the count. So let's drop that to 11. And maybe we need to drop it to 10. And let's go to the other one. So this one here and set this one, the count to 10. And actually, I think I'm going to set that one to 11. So it's one on the other side. So we've got that there. So now we have our two array elements set up. I'm going to join these together. Control select both of them and join them together as a compound. That is to make compound. So I've created a single object for this. Now the reason for this is I'm going to use this single object in the same way as I use these as a object that I want to array this way. So we're taking it in stages. This means this keeps this all nice and quick because they're all connected together via a link rather than having the individual rectangles in that sketch and trying to strew them all and cut them all. This is still going to take a little time when it comes to cut, but it's going to be so much more faster. So, so far we have the compound object, but we need to create multiple copies of these going this way. So what do we need to do? Well, we're going to use the same process and create duplicates of these via this time a linear array. To use the linear array, I need to find out the path that linear array is going to take. Now, if we look at this as the object, we need to follow this line here, so this edge here. So this is going to be the linear array. We can create multiple copies along this way. So it's a straight trajectory of where we want this to array along. So we've selected that edge, lattice two, linear array, and again, linear array, span slash n. So we've got the linear array in there. Now look how the linear array is being placed. The kites are this way. So we've got to match kite for kite. I'm going to click on the linear array and hide it. And as we saw before, we need to add a placement, but we're going to do something slightly different. Rather than adding the placement to this object, I'm going to add it to this edge. So we can attach a placement by coming up to lattice two, attach placement, attach to placement, and let's place it Z tangent to edge. So we've got it there. So the Z of this kite is tangent to that edge. And we've got to match like for like. Now remember the kites were around this way, pointing this way with the wings upwards. So we need to rotate around the Y axis. Let's go 90 degrees around the Y. And if we look at that, we're almost there. We need to rotate around this axis here, which is, if I look, we're looking at the Z axis. Come down to the Z. Let's go 90 degrees around the Z. Well, it's not 90 degrees. Let's go 180 degrees to flip it around that way. So we've got it going this way. And what we've done is actually match kite for kite, and though we've attached it to this edge. Now you're probably asking, well, doesn't the attachment affect the rotation, etc., of this? Where this lays, if we look at that kite and we look at the linear array, you can see the kites match. 
if this kite was round and laying flat against this way, so the kite came this way, then the kite would have to rotate to match linear A, and it will take this with it. So although the kite isn't attached to the object that we want to array along this way, it still acts as its placement. Let's show that linear array. So I'm going to use the left hand side in the tree view, select the compound, select its placement, and then select its new placement. So copies will be made across here. Again, come up to last two, come down with pop up copies and moved object. We've now moved those across there, as you can see. So we're coming to here, this moved compound. You can see we've got the original compound. Let's press the spacebar on that to hide it. And the linear array and the placement. Let's hide the placement. So we want to affect the linear array now. Again, we're going to be needing offsets, etc., to allow this to array perfectly. Let's come down. Again, we've got the same offset values and step values, etc. So offset here, go one. This will place it one forward. So you can see this kite has taken up the first position. So let's come in and change the count. And we can set this one to say 40. And you can see what's happened there. So now we've got this array in here, we need to do some finer adjustments. So up here, we need to back this off the top. And also we may need to push this up a bit from the bottom or reposition it somewhere. To do that, we need to affect this linear array. Now, if we remember back to when we attach this, it's attached to this edge. So if we look to the left, we can see we've got the span end. Now this length is 500. So if I change this to say 450 to pull it back, this is not going to take, if I hit enter, you see this just changes back. So what we can do is actually detach it from its sublink. So this strewed edge one, we can actually remove it from here, but still let's go to the top and we've got the link of a strewed. So we can come in here and clear that one, hit OK. The sublink goes. And now if we come down to the bottom, we've got the span end, which we can adjust to 450 and hit enter. And you can see that's backed off there. Let's go for something like 475. And we can play with this until we get the right effect. So for, let's go for four, six, five. There we go. And also if we look, we obviously got the arrangement of these hexagons. So you can see these are right because these are controlled by just two lots of hexagons and then we get into problems as they span across. So we may want to adjust our hexagon lateral spacing which is done via the count. So if I put this up to say 41, you can see how those are closed up there. So it's a juggling act between the count and the span end and the span start to get the effect that we want. There's also mathematical calculations we can put together for this and decide whereabouts we're gonna place this and how far away from the edges it's going to set. So we've also got, if we look at the linear array, we've got span end and the span start. So as well as the offset, which pushes it one forward, we can push it even further with the span start. So I could zero out this offset, add the one at the front, and let's say five, 10, 15, about 20 from this edge. And then we've got the same up here. So we look up here, we've stopped at the span end at 462. Let's go for 465. 
so we can get the effect that we want. I'm only going to do one side of the speaker, so I need the transition between this as a mirror to be continuous. That means taking these hexagons and repeating it so it's halfway across here. So we need to increase this out. That's going to be done with the polar array. The look on the polar array, well, if we come down, we can see that we've got the offsets. So I'm going to zero out these offsets on both the polar arrays. And you can see this one's gone to here. That's come over to the other polar array. And look at the offset. Zero that one out. And basically they're on top of each other. So I've got to bring this over. And we'll go for 0 0.5. So half a step forwards. There we go. So that's in the middle. And if we look along here, this looks like it needs to be increased by one as well. So let's have a look at the count. Increase that count to 12. And it's not that one. So let's undo that. It's actually the other polar array. This one here. So this one's count as 10. Let's set this to 11. And let's go one more as 12. That brings it out to here. And we've got our half hexagon here as well. So now we're ready to go. So we've got everything we need. We look, we've got the move compound and we're gonna extract this from the part of Strude that's behind. We can see that it's punched through the other side and we're ready to go. So the next step, we could use this move compound against the part of Strude, but the developer said to me that it's worth downgrading these first. So lattice two, and we come down to the downgrade. We have a parametric downgrade in the lattice two to convert it to a much more simplistic object. So downgrade to leaves. It's what's been suggested. We now have leaves of move compound and inside that we have the move compound. That's come over to the part. And now what I'm going to do is take the leaf of the move compound and use this as a cut against this one. So let's select the one we want to keep, which is actually the strude. Control select the leaves of the move compound and then we use the boolean cut. This may take a little while to take effect. And now it's taken effect and you can see we've got the cut that runs all the way along there. We've got these placement objects which we can click on, press the space bar to hide them. And from here, we can then take that cut and create a mirror. So that's hide all that, take the cut, part, mirroring. We're going to mirror this over the YZ plane. So this plane here, the YZ. Come in and pick YZ plane and hit OK. Again, the mirroring may take a little while. And we've mirrored that across there. Now, there is another way to mirror. You can see the seam of the mirror there. Let's get rid of that cut. And I'm going to click on the cut again. So I've released that cut from the mirror. Come over to the draft workbench. And we'll use a clone. So we've got that cut selected. We're going to clone that. So that's cloned now. So it's quite a quick clone. And we'll come into the scale. And what we're going to do is use a reflection. So to do that, I'm going to reflect it along the X by placing a minus in here and this should reflect it across that probably took a similar amount of time and you can see we've got the same effect but we've got a different look in our tree so we've got the two cuts clone and the original so depending on what workflow you want to use you can actually use that rather than getting a nesting you then get these separate Let's turn that grid in off. So there we have the finished object. We can union these together and we've got our speaker grill. 
So I hope that's given you an insight of how to use the Lattice 2 workbench for those repeating patterns. For well, something that's quite time consuming processor wise for FreeCAD, such as grills or hexagon patterns like this, and to speed up that workflow. As said, the sketch on surface, it can be done with that, but you'll be waiting a very long time for that to compute. It may even fail. This is a more safer way of doing this type of modeling. And it's a much quicker way because we just have one single sketch, one single hexagon, and we can array that whatever way we want to allow us to create something like this. Hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you again in a new one. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.